good evening uh, viewers audience and good evening devika uh, before i start my conversation with the author what i want to say that today it's not my day it's her day so it's not important what i did and what i didn't do it's important what she did because we'll discuss about her and her book the mind game now uh, there was a time when the readers didn't have the opportunity to interact with the authors because there was no kind of technology today because of technology you know the, a reader can have a session with an author over skype over whatsapp chat or whatever so that's a fantastic opportunity the reader has got but unfortunately uh, for some reason reading habit is gradually diminishing so it's important that through this kind of session we try to inculcate a feeling we try to inspire people so that they read i have read the mind game and i can say not because i'm having a session with her the mind game is absolutely mind blowing and deals with mind nothing can be done in this world without a mind whatever you do whether you cook whether you love whether you become angry whether you shout whether you act whether you don't act you need a mind to do that and she has written about the mind game and regarding her uh, multi talented kind of existence already mona has told you so i need not sort of repeat that but what is fascinating is uh, devika you are an author and you are also an actor and you are also an it personality before i start discussing on the book i'm sure the audience would love to know about you first and then about your creation so what is do you think is the commonality between these three your writing which is where in the pen is mightier than the sword and your acting which is fantastic because i am also a stage actor so i'd love to see what your acting on stage one day and also you are an it personality information technology and because of it we are interacting you are somewhere else i'm somewhere else so what do you think is the commonality between the three or it just happened by chance by accident so the i started writing at the age of 13 as mona said i started with poetry and theater theater was there like acting i i acted as a child also in various uh, plays and during durga pujo uh, celebration during durga pujo we used to have uh, various cultural performances and i used to act uh, in in those plays also uh, uh and after that i took up prof uh, theater professionally from 2005 onwards where i started my theater journey in bangalore and i think the commonality as you say like even in in my it profession i am a content writer so that writing is my profession as well so uh, all these three facets of my life are Uh, solely dependent on my observation skills and understanding of human behavior so i think theater has helped me understand human beings understand people in general and that itself is very uh, enlightening enlightening for me and it has helped me become a better person so okay. that is yeah. common you said something very very interesting word which i think will be important for our session today understanding so i personally feel whatever you want to do you will have to understand you will have to analyze you will have to interpret and you will have to internalize these are the four elements which are needed to do any kind of creative work and i'm sure when you write or when you act these four elements play a very important role now uh, you did your uh, kind of blogging for some years and then in 2016 your journey of uh, of the author life began with seven vows of marriage okay and in bengali we have uh, a beautiful novel which has been filmed uh, by ajay kaur called shaptapadi so the the seven vows is not necessarily shaptapadi but the, there is a kind of similarity between shaptapadi and seven vows now what 
how did you choose this subject and why did you choose this subject as your maiden uh, kind of novel so i did not have any goal as such of publishing a book or uh, making my views public i did not have a goal in my mind but uh, i was staying in delhi that, at that time and in the pg like uh, we were we were we used to have discussions on marriage because marriage is a uh, still a problem for girls and the young young people uh, if yeah, you are about like kashmir and middle east it, it has no solution yeah. <laughs> if if you are above 25 and you are not if you are still single then obviously it is a big issue in the family the family will discuss the relatives will discuss the first question anybody asked is when will you get married so we yeah. we used to share our thoughts about marriage and what do we feel about marriage so when my pg mates uh, heard about my perspective they said uh, since you write as well why don't you publish it as a book Uh, because your thoughts are very forward uh, forward th- you are a forward thinker and why don't you because my perspective of marriage is that it is not a societal obligation so when they heard this they said your views must be made public i i took a i took a plunge into the publishing industry and i self published it on amazon kindle the book received a good uh, response and i said okay that means i can write for the public uh then gradually uh, it took place and and one of the most overwhelming reviews that i got for seven vows of marriage was many women married women told me that we are very happy that you have voiced our opinion i will say this line in bengali ki ora amake eta bollo ki मने भावी मन भावना के तुम शब्द दिए ट्रांसलेटेड start dialogue on the mind game because i'm sure the seven vows of marriage uh, you know when you are writing a lot of things came to your mind about relationships where mind plays a very important role and that has also given you some impetus to write this book the mind game now in it so far as the concept of marriage is concerned what i have read a little about your seven vows of marriage that you have very very critically analyzed marriage in the eastern world and the marriage in the western world and uh, which is very very important but marriage is marriage it is a kind of bond between a man and a woman and uh, and there you know in a male dominated society women uh, have a different same kind of role all over the world maybe the degrees differ now how this book seven vows of marriage and when did you write the mind game in which year did you write the mind game Mind Game was uh, published in uh, 2018. 2018, but you wrote it before, isn't it? Before. Yes, I I I started writing it in 2017. You started writing in 2017. Uh, how many months after uh, Seven Vows of Marriage was published? Uh, so t- um, uh, it was like one and a half years. It took one and a half years to uh, publish the Mind Game. Yeah, because okay. I I took I took one and a half years to finish the manuscript of uh, the mind game because it was uh, based on uh, extensive research. And uh, when did you write the poems, reminiscence? Is it in between sixteen and seventeen, or you are still writing? The poem poems are I I'm still writing the poems and I got a chance to publish it. So like whatever poems I had written from the age of thirteen till date. Uh, I have been publishing it in bits and pieces. Yeah, but what I what I find very interesting is your subject in the vows of seven vows of marriage and the mind game have some relation. But in poem, there's one poem, "Death I Know Not Thee" or something like that. There is one yes. poem where you are dealing with a subject which has nothing to do with seven vows of marriage or the mind game, and it is basically uh, a journey down memory lane or a very abstract concept. how did you choose those subjects of the poem i mean how did it come to you 
and but you uh, did not know anything about that in in your uh, the mind game yeah yes so uh, death i know not be uh, was uh, like you said uh, all all my writings have a certain commonality which is it has a tinge of psychology or human behavior or understanding people so even in death i know not be i wanted to i wanted to mention that uh, i am confident i don't fear death because i think the fear of death is the biggest fear and if i have conquered that in my mind i will be a free bird so but, that is uh, that. yeah okay can, can i sort of again before i start the mind game see the concept of death has been described by rovindranath as transcendation there is no end like uh, he has written a song shesh nahi je shesh katha ke bolbe so there is no end as such it's always transcendation from one phase to the other do you also believe in the same way i i believe we die uh, only our our skin dies and our soul remains and we are born as a new species and uh, yeah. based based on our karma we are we were born as a new species but uh, the soul travels in various forms only the human skin dies yeah because gita also says that the soul changes the house yes. you know yes. from one to the other now uh, now let us start the mind game i i i am very curious to know that rovindranath uh, in his gitanjali wrote the poem where the mind is without fear and in your book there is a chapter where you are talking about basic two emotions fear and love you know from fear everything you know stems from fear everything stems from love all the manifestations of happiness sadness miseries now did this thought which i think is the thought of upanishad where the mind is without fear had any kind of uh, inspiration or impact on you when you were writing this when you started writing it Did, because i can see rovindranath's picture uh, just behind your way you are sitting yeah so his, his this poem uh, where the mind is uh, without fear is is a very integral part of me because i started reading psychology and uh, human behavior at the age of 15 and uh, and i uh, started reading rabindran uh, tagore's poems at a very young age uh, even gitanjali i had i had written uh, i had uh, finished in my teens itself so mm, i think uh, ruby babu's work has uh, has made a lot of impact uh, on me on my life and on my writing style as well and uh, the kind of depth that he has tried to uh, portray in his work i i try to reach that level some day oh great i'm sure you will uh, but i have a question seven vows of marriage is a fiction you know basically it's a kind of story kind of thing but yes. this is a very what should i say that you are giving stimulus to the reader to respond to what you are saying yeah. so why did this you know instead of because at the beginning of the book there is a story of a couple you know the in the mind game but yeah. you don't continue with the story you just use that story as a kind of example of mind and how mind should be uh, expressed or mind should be dealt with now why is it that you you decided to do it in a kind of essay type uh, kind of writing like bacon like you know yes so basically i wanted to write a non fiction book uh, but i did not want uh, want it to be boring or I, i wanted to keep the audience engaged with the book for that i included stories in it and so i started with a story so that Uh, it is it is easier to communicate the message uh, uh, through uh, through the medium of a story but uh, i also wanted to include all the extensive research that i had done and i did not want to dilute that research in the form of uh, story so i kept the non fiction part also where where all the theories all the research based facts have been all the practical tips have been given but i wanted to make the book interesting as well so i included uh, stories it, it is interesting it is interesting because i have read it so i can i can tell the viewers 
that once you read it, you will find it very, very, very engaging and very, very interesting because it deals with our day to day life, our day to day emotion. It deals with day to day situations. Only thing it is not describing the situation, but it is also uh, kind of giving a direction to a person how you can manage or your, how you can deal with your with your mind. Now, uh, mind is a huge, you know, it has got it has a subconscious mind, there's a conscious mind. And uh, there are uh, two pillars of consciousness. One is perception, the other is perspective. Now, the readers will like to know what is your concept of mind per se within quotes. Uh, my concept of mind is it is a thinking tool. It is a tool which thinks and uh, whatever, uh, whatever responses we generate to situations are generated from the mind itself. We see, we see through our sensory organs, uh, the five sensory organs, but whatever response to stimulus is generated by the mind. So okay. it's actually the powerhouse of all emotions. Okay, it's a storehouse of all emotions. Okay, yes. fantastic. Now, tell me, uh, mind of a man and the mind of a woman, absolutely, you know, it's, I won't say it's, opposite but it's different yes. for physiological existence of a man or physiological biological existence of a woman the minds of men and the minds of women despite the fact each are each is attracted to the other but even each is also very antagonized with the, with the other especially after marriage you know yes. so how do you sort of when you are writing about emotions fear and love now, fear of a man and fear of a woman, a fear of love uh, and the concept of love to a woman and uh, uh, to a man is different. How did you take into account that and then generalize something about fear and love? So I, I did not want to uh, go into like what is the fear of uh, fear of a man or a fear of a woman. But in general, I wanted to say that why does why do we fear? Why does the emotion of fear uh, arouse in us? First of all, what is the root cause of fear? And because fear is related to some insecurities, it is because it is a result of insecurities. It may be external or internal. External, it may be created externally, like it might be an influence of uh, relatives, friends, and or internally, you might you might be uh, you might be belittling yourself or underestimating yourself, and thus creating that insecurity. So all the 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 whole concept of fear and love, I have presented it in a general uh, sense so that it is applicable to both, so that people understand that uh, leaving leaving the gender aside, there is a root cause of that kind of emotion so i wanted to focus on that rather than making it a gender centric uh, book okay uh, now uh, whatever you have written in the book about essential tips about facing the demon about being one's own boss you know there are so many chapters i mean we cannot discuss each chapter today because that will take at least two days to sort of have this kind of session in within 45 minutes one hour we can cover certain elements of the book and uh, the basic idea is to uh, pass on the message to the reader that how interesting the elements are so that they uh, read the book and it i'm sure it will be a lot of help to a lot of people now primarily i think the premise on which this book has been written is interpersonal relationship because as human beings we are not we are not islands you know we live with other people and when we live with other people there are so many relationships like father mother son daughter do uh, brother sisters then lover you know friends uh, wife husband now every role every relationship is different now how do you think from your book so with a, such a generalized uh, kind of analysis of emotions and how one should deal with emotion, uh, uh, a reader will benefit. 
uh, the generalized concept of emotions will help uh, people understand the core of emotional uh, intelligence the core of eq and it will also help them analyze and uh, adopt the process of self awareness or self love because what happens nowadays uh, i have seen not nowadays even in uh, in our past also we have seen many a times what happens is we are so confused that we don't know what do we want it is like are we are we fulfilling other other people's dreams or are we fulfilling our dreams and by the time this question is answered it is it is too late in life so through this clear understanding of what is the general concept of emotions a person will be able to analyze their emotional uh, state or state of mind as they say in the present situation because sometimes what happens is we are very ignorant about what we are feeling in the present situation we we are either too bothered about the past or too much invested in the future that we forget that there is a present to live uh yes but actually emotion not only plays uh, when we are having a relationship with somebody else it is also when i am alone you know yes. i am happy i am sad i am angry i am very jubilant and i am also not well you know because there are primarily i think there are four problems uh, a human being faces and interestingly they all they all end with al number one is physical where you have a physical problem you go to a doctor and the doctor will uh, cure you then financial that is also al you know the friends are there parents are there bank is there office is there then legal you go to a lawyer but when it is emotional there is practically nobody you become your own doctor and there your book the mind game is very very important and uh, i have read one book which i want to ask you whether you have also uh, uh, been associated or read that book it's called daniel goldman's emotional intelligence yes. where he talks about five elements self awareness you have also talked about knowing thyself and that's the crux of upanishad atmanam vidhi know thyself because without knowing uh, oneself one cannot progress in life and then he talks about self regulation regulation of emotion then he talks about relation motivation relation uh, motivation empathy now this is one word empathy now what do you do you think importance of empathy in having a good relationship with anybody in the world empathy is uh, important very important uh, in relationships not only with others but with yourself also like we have we always hear be kind to yourself it is okay yeah. to forgive your mistakes you are not a perfect person you will learn from your mistakes so don't be hard on yourself first of all try to empathize with yourself and try to be kind to yourself and then em empathize with others because you everybody is going through a different uh, path and everybody is walking a different path of their life everybody is going through a different journey of life they have their own ups and downs but as a human being what can i do i can just lend a helping hand or just let that person be as they are as he or she is do not do not try to uh, force forcibly change a person the change should be organic or natural yes now in, in your book there is a, a quotation from sigmund freud unexpressed emotions will never die they bear it alive and will come forth later in uglier ways so you are talking about catharsis you are yes. talking about sharing now how does you know because human psyche is so different you have one kind of psyche i have susrut mona everybody has different kind of psyches there are introverts there are extroverts a situation may come where a person is so bogged down by his or her negative emotions that he or she is not ready to share what does he or she uh, do then there are a lot of uh, methods of self awareness of uh, self healing 
like you can you can engage in writing creative journaling is one of one of the measures where you just write down your expressions what are you feeling just write it down or just draw painting painting is a very uh, very good uh, form of therapy a any kind of art form is is very good because if you engage in art what happens is you get out of the situation which made you sad for for some time for some time and then you will realize that okay whether whether that situation was as bad as you had perceived or not so it gives you that time to think think about the situation and sometimes you need to distract yourself from that uh, negative emotion yes i mean I, I completely agree with you but i'm what i'm saying my question is uh, you know there, there there are certain situations in life where you know you completely go on denial you do not want to have any kind of interaction with anybody you go to a cocoon go inside your room lock yourself uh, and do not sort of try to interact with the outer world yes. such situation you know normally people say go to a counselor go to a therapist go to a psychiatrist now that is very easier said than done because oh. that is also i think a lack of empathy uh, uh, plays a very important role in the people who are very care caring about the person without realizing that what he or she is going through in But that situation that person who is going through that experience what is the first step he or she should take to try to come out of the situation first step is acknowledging that you have a problem first step because sometimes we are we are not ready to accept acceptance is gives you a lot of uh, energy and motivation to fight with the problem but the main problem is acceptance and acknowledging that yes i have a problem Very so nice. in, order, in order to get that strength uh, it is it is uh, unfortunately unfortunately in uh, in the indian society we are not taught uh, right from a childhood on how to care, take care of our emotional health we say like we say why are you crying you are not you are not a child anymore if if you become an adult uh, like boys like boys boys should not cry that kind yeah. of a stereotype and i during my research i also studied that men commit um, uh, men commit a lot more suicide than women because men are taught that men should not cry right from that childhood right from their childhood and because of that the emotions get suppressed they are not able to vent it out and they don't even know what is the right way to channel those energies so i What's think i think we are very ignorant first of all we should educate ourselves about mental health it is very necessary that as parents we should talk to our children and teach our children that if a situation is not okay then come and discuss it with us because parents are the first support system finding a support system is very important for good mental health and support system need not be only your parents it can be you yourself like how do you release those emotions you have to first and like i said sir acknowledging that okay i have a problem it takes a lot of mental strength to acknowledge that okay yes i am not perfect yes i mean you are, you are talked about three a's acknowledge accept and admit you know yes. these are very very important but you do not know unknowingly you have taken upon you a responsibility do you know that what is that about educating people no about writing a book on parenting oh. you know your next yeah you know the way you have explained and it's so true because in eastern educational ethos right from our childhood we are told do not argue with your parents do not argue with your teachers so the self expressions are curbed right from the childhood people become inhibited and false kind of notions are injected whether in the western world first they are asked to question and disagree you know they they are asked, they are allowed to express themselves so i think after the mind game your next book would be on parenting okay right. you know thank you yeah. for the so, because because i think it is important because hardly there is any book on that 
and uh, because I also face similar kind of situations when I go for trading to various institutes, whenever I ask any question, a condolence meeting begins. You know, there's a complete silence. Nobody asks any question because they do not know how to question. Correct. So that is one thing because you are writing such books. So how to question, you know, the, how to sort of have a clarity of mind, how to think. And unless you have a clarity of mind, you cannot have a clarity of expression. Correct. Also, a, a similar kind of thing which uh, you have written, angry, don't be, it's, it's, angry, don't be any person capable of, it's a Greek philosopher who has written this. Uh, angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. So it is again very easier said than done. You know, we all become angry. You know, all. Because anger is a good emotion. Anger is also a bad emotion. Sometimes anger is needed. Sometimes it is not needed. How does one balance that? Anger, again, it, it, it is all about, uh, it comes down to self-awareness. You should, you should uh, have a habit of uh, introspecting uh, about how do you respond to uh, uh, situations. I I am I am always using the term respond and not react because what happens is in in angry in in situations of anger we generally react and not respond. But if you have if you train your mind to respond to situations, you will you will take at least few seconds to think, take a step back think and then uh, offer your reaction offer your uh, emotional response so i think i think this is something which should be deliberately done uh, people should when you get angry just take a pause count backwards this is a uh, this is a trick my grandmother had uh, told me that next time when you get angry take a pause start counting backwards from 100 to 1 and it was it worked like magic because I was very short tempered and once I started applying this trick I realized that by the time I reached 95 my anger anger went away vanished because it, it was for a very trivial reason so sometimes we we just react and don't respond so I think there, there, there is a need to develop this habit habit of responding and not reacting. Uh, yes, yeah, true. And and there, you know, in your book, what is I think, uh, if you have a second edition again, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do not know whether I missed it because role play plays a very important role, you know, in so far as your whatever stimulus you have given. So if you have a kind of chapter on the role play because mind works differently with each role you know my mind uh, will work when i'm interacting with my father in a way when i'm interacting with my child is another way now there you have you know I'll, I'll when i'll come to the end of the session i have what i liked about the book is the last two lines which i'm not going to mention now because i do not know because i i i did a play called uh, Le Messal, which means dirty hands by Jean Paul Sartre, where the last slide is not fit for salvage. And I'm sure that Jean Paul Sartre thought about the last line first and then back calculated and wrote the book. Did you do that when you wrote the last two lines? You had that in your mind and then you back calculated. I'm not mentioning the line now. So, uh, yes, sort of yes. It is yeah. uh, partially yes. The last. Uh, last two lines were the trigger to write the whole book because then I then I went on to uh, dividing the chapters, uh, dividing the sections of the book, and yes, yes. So you, you are you are. Yeah. Right. I thought because when I read the last line, I thought that this is what because uh, any writer thinks of the end first, and maybe from there he goes backward. Now. Yes. Another thing I've talked about Daniel Goldman because Daniel Goldman is fantastic. So far as I'm concerned, he is brilliant. So far as because today it's no more IQ, it is EQ, which is more important about which you have also written because emotional quotient is more important than intelligent quotients because intelligence is also divided into categories. Like there is, I'm sure you know about Karl Albrecht. 
he wrote social intelligence where he talked about abstract intelligence cognitive intelligence aesthetic intelligence kinetic intelligence and social intelligence everybody does not have the same kind of intelligence and when somebody has got abstract intelligence and somebody has got kinetic intelligence how will these two different people uh, will play their mind games so abstract intelligence and uh, kinetic intelligence or cognitive, yeah. cognitive cognitive and abstract uh, so basically i think i think art art is a great example to display to display both the in the, both the forms of intelligence because an artist needs to be abstract as well as have the kinetic uh, intelligence also because what happens is we need to imagine we need to imagine a uh, a character and also need to portray it in in in, in front of the audience so i think uh, in describing these two forms of intelligence my theater experience has helped a lot yes yes that's what i want to know from you because we please share what kind of plays you have done and what kind of roles you have played and how that has been done you know when you are preparing a role that which is not you so you are having two minds one is the mind of you and the other is the mind of the role the character who is basically imaginary or maybe historical or maybe mythological that's a different thing now i want to know how this exercise of theater you know helps you know because there is no kind of problem for anybody to do a theater not necessarily you know, to perform it on stage you can do it in your courtyard also you know okay. so okay. how that theater experience has helped you in understanding this mind game uh theater has helped me a lot because the number of roles that i have played i have act, i have attended over 400 workshops the theater workshops all across india and i have also the i have also the participated in more than more than 250 shows and uh, and the roles i i always do different kind of roles because i don't want to be a type casted that that is that is one of the things can, can I, we can we know something some roles you have done can you share uh, the stories very sure. briefly so that people sure. can yeah so i have uh, i have done i have acted in jathi pucho sadhu ji i was putna mosi and there i had to play uh, like um, there is a hindi word i am not getting the exact english word for it it is a kukar mosi a cruel cruel um, aunt who who is protecting her niece uh, protecting her niece from uh, from a person who is not uh, who is from a lower caste so so uh, i have i have also played um, uh, sipahi ki ma uh, by uh, mohan rakesh i have i have uh, acted as the mother of a of an of an army soldier who goes into battle and his dead body arrives so preparing for that preparing for that was very tough for me it it was an emotional downturn for me i i felt very overwhelmed after it because just thinking i i myself come from an army background and playing the role of an army soldier who dies in the battle it it is something i i took two months to prepare for the role i i the i got into the character very well i portrayed the character very well but once the show was over i cried a lot because it was very overwhelming for me uh, then yes. i also uh, then i also have acted in short films where i have acted as a mother i have acted as the um, a, a woman who is uh, having an affair with a married man all these roles all these different roles uh, i have played and uh, one of one monologue i have done which which was uh, on a uh, which was the retrospective narrative of a theater artist who 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 sacrifices her love for her career in acting i think that is one of the roles which i consider to be one of my favorites because i could personally relate to that role and there is one uh, uh, one play for which i did the production work but i liked the script a lot that is nirmal verma's weekend 
Okay. I think I think uh, that is that is a uh, that is a a play which it is it is a monologue by uh, again a woman who is having an affair with a married man, but she sacrifices her love. Love for the uh, so that the child, his child, should not have a negative impact. So, so doing these kind of serious roles has also made my outlook very broad-minded. I have become very broad-minded because nowadays I don't judge anybody just by the cover. Like just by me by meeting a person in the first instance, I don't judge the person at all. So I think it has made me. I have. I feel liberated now after doing all these roles, and I thank all my directors who have guided me and who have allowed me to explore the character on my own. So I because uh, I also personally feel because that famous line by Shakespeare, in as you like it, all the world is stage and all men and women are merely players. we play our roles in real life we also play roles in on stage and real life so we are always playing roles and yes. in that playing roles mind plays a very important game and there the mind game becomes very very uh, kind of uh, what should i say relevant and yes. now uh, i i would ask you about a question it's regarding you have written this book primarily to instill happiness to primarily to inject peace of mind to primarily to have a healthy emotional life that is your primary objective now this happiness you know uh, this norman vincent peel is the power of positive thinking he has a chapter called how to create your own happiness where lincoln says that uh, uh, he was asked how come you are so happy he said what is the secret there is no secret i wake up every good every day and i have got exactly two choices in front of me either to be happy or to be unhappy now i choose to be happy now this again it is easier said than done that i choose to be happy despite my challenges that my my crises my problems my egos my everything now how can according to you you know through your mind game uh, reading your mind game can somebody choose to be happy i feel after reading the mind game this is what uh, a lot of people or a lot of readers have told me that what has happened is it might not have made a remarkable shift in their mindset but what it has done is that they uh, they have uh, got a got an impetus to understand themselves see i i, I have a simple uh, i ha have a simple thought process why should we judge others before we know ourselves fully so i think this uh, the most important message i want to give through mind game is first of all become self aware first of all know yourself you are the you are the choice of your own happiness unless and until you know what makes you happy you can't and we have this we have this uh, bad habit of uh, blaming others for our sadness Now here I I I'm sorry to interrupt. When you are saying uh, you you know what makes you happy, self awareness. Now can you suggest? You know it's called basically auto suggestion. You know you yes. introspect and suggest yourself. Can you give any kind of exercises or tips or a practice one can do? Like for example, uh, I, I do uh, breathing exercises every day, and it really helps me. Uh, and tunes me up for the whole day i don't get tired even after working 15 16 hours now can you suggest anything which one anybody irrespective of uh, any class age can practice to learn how to know oneself one is focus focusing is very very important you can learn the uh, technique of focusing on whatever you are doing like Uh, it it is called meditation i i won't say just sitting in a peaceful room and closing your eyes and breathing uh, is called meditation even when you are doing some activity but if you, and if you are doing that activity with complete focus and concentration that is meditation you are focusing your energies 
in that single activity you are not distracted you are avoiding distractions that is focusing if you practice the art of focusing you will see a lot of your problems will be solved yes and also in your book you have written unhappy people dislike their jobs unhappy people worry about finances unhappy people are not active now this unhappy people nobody becomes unhappy right from birth you know circumstances make people happy and unhappy now there again uh, i'd ask you that you cannot categorize what really i mean makes you unhappy or what makes me unhappy it, the reasons are causes are completely different now what you have suggested about how to create your own happiness and focus now at the same time life is so complex life is so complicated is full of problems because especially after pandemic you know i i i, I want to bring that topic because after pandemic uh, people were absolutely uncertain what exactly will be their future including all of us so we didn't know the especially on 24th march when we were told in a very intimidating voice dan se suniye bada bajne ka baad nahi nikalenge my hindi is very bad don't mind huh? so so that really created palpitations in a lot of people and after that it was very a challenging uh, kind of life for everybody and obviously people became unhappy people became you know they had anxiety their panic their tension they had worry and uh, you know a lot of people committed suicide you know about the migrant workers so it is not really easy to focus so it is a kind of process to which one can go now how does one deal with that in such situations so i would say there are very, uh, there are external factors which uh, which will affect your uh mindset which will uh, affect your happiness levels you should be aware of uh, th there is a concept of gaslighting also which i have uh, which i have read in, during my research where it, which states that there is an external factor which is creating an insecurity in your life when you have those kind of anxiety issues or you are worried because of any external circumstance first of all i know it is not easy to do but if you have the habit of analyzing analysis basically like there are four questions you should three three important questions you should answer why are you worrying is it because of an internal issue or an external issue if it is external if it is external issue what is the source of that issue and can that source be tackled with or not like for example uh, the pandemic led to a, a lot of loss of jobs people lost their jobs but now what do you do either either you can have anxiety attacks you can have palpitations you can disturb your mental health that is one that was witnessed people a lot of people committed suicide because they had lost their jobs and they were uh, financial instability was there now another alternative is you take control of the situation and think what will you do to improve the situation what are i think it is it is all about and, and i think family support is also the support system do you have the right support system to get you out of the situation finding the right support system is very very important and i must tell all the viewers today that finding the right support system is a blessing if you find people who will stand with you in your hard times that is the best gift life will give you so even like uh, in in the pandemic itself i i realized one thing about myself that for me loneliness is not a weakness being alone and lonely, loneliness is are two different concepts being alone i like to be alone because 
I have that space of mind. I can think about what makes me happy. What is my priority of life? Obviously, 2020, I had my plans in January 2020. But because of the pandemic, all those plans, all those goals were shattered. But is that uh, moment so strong enough that it will crush my life? This is something you have to answer to yourself. You have to be honest to yourself. How will you allow external situations to affect you? And it also uh, it is also a, a wake up call for people that prepared, being prepared, being prepared is a valuable asset in life. That uh, the values that our parents taught us of discipline, disaster management, risk taking ability. I think those are the values which we should remind ourselves every day now, especially after the pandemic. That, okay, if this kind of a situation occurs next time, what will I do? Yes. Uh, again, uh, by saying this, you have taken upon you another responsibility, like writing a book on parenting, writing a book for teachers. Okay? Yes. Because yes. in India, there you know that literacy level is so low. It is not possible for the majority of the people think the way you are asking them to think because their basic needs are not taken care of. Yes. And that will come much later when they get their uh, proper shelter, proper food and proper clothing. So yes. there, our education system or education plays a very important role. So one is parenting, the other is for schools, for teachers. So you will have to write because unless and unless this is taught from the childhood how to focus how to introspect how to think how to question and which i'll the topic i'll, I'll discuss now is how to be objective because we are all subjective yes. you know we always consider first what i think if my girlfriend or my wife or anybody does not take my call does not respond to my whatsapp i get angry without thinking that she is not or maybe she is not in a position to take my call so uh, I, I i can mention about a beautiful tv tv series i saw uh, by ingvar berg by a swedish director the last husband wife they had a problem and finally the husband says that i've realized why lies the problem we love each other in an imperfect way. I love you the way I want to love you, not the way you want me to love you. And you love me the way you want to love me, not the way I want you to love me. So th there lies the crux of the problem. So yes. that crux of the problem cannot be solved. As I said, marriage is like Kashmir and Middle East. There is no solution. And <laughs> when you write your part two, uh, seven vows of marriage, you can include this. So. Uh, how does one become objective? First of all, don't consider yourself as a per perfect human being. Accept your weaknesses. You are Strong. not perfect. Strength, yes. weakness and opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do the SWOT analysis. And be compassionate. Be compassionate because and accept the other person with their own weaknesses. Don't judge. Don't judge people. Yes, because you Very don't know. People do judge people. The parents <laughs> judge their children. Children judge their parents. Yes, you know? it, is, it, it is a very sad thing. Like uh, right from the childhood, we are we are into this whole uh, game of competition. We are competing mm -hmm. competing with our siblings. We are competing with our neighbors' kids. We are competing. We have a certain status symbol that we have to maintain. I think it is a lot of undue pressure that we are put under. Like, I, I will just uh, cite a small example. If you observe a, a kid, a child who is born, a newborn baby, or maybe three months, just three months, the way that child behaves, regardless of who you are, the child will interact with you non-verbally. The child does not have any inhibitions of how how its actions are being perceived by the by the receiver. 
but what happens to the child when the child turns one one year old you are okay the parents start telling do this do that this is right this is wrong please don't don't do that don't do that this is right this is wrong let the child figure it out because unnecessarily we are we are uh, we are uh, trapped in a vicious circle of stereotypes right from the childhood and the whole imagination and exploration phase is uh, killed so do not do that don't do that and if you have realized at a certain stage uh, like after becoming an adult if you have realized that what you have been taught is wrong try to unlearn it it is a tough process to unlearn but always be willing to stay as a student it will this philosophy has helped me all my life i am a student for life because i want to learn i don't want to say that i know everything i think this philosophy helps a lot this approach helps a lot in you to remain objective true uh, i i have one more thing uh, to reach out to a larger reader readers you know uh, area uh, i do not know whether you have plans to translate this into hindi because then you can reach out to a uh, much more you know larger sections of uh, your audience you know because english is a language which is understood by a very very few people in india so uh, and and we need uh, translations of these whether you can you translate or somebody else is this is my suggestion so that because it's a lovely book the mind game though it is a very general stimulus to for the readers to respond but when you segment it as i said the parents the teachers the students the lovers the married couple then your mind game will be played in a completely different uh, with rules the rules are completely different so now i will read out the last two lines you have written remember if you are mindful and at peace happiness and success will always knock your doors after all it's all a mind game so success is a very relative word success in personal life or in professional life or to yourself will again depend on the individual now i wish uh, we could uh, sort of have this discussion hour after hour but we have a kind of time limit and uh, lovely that you wrote this book that's why i got an opportunity to interact with you uh, of a, a chance to know you and uh, to know your book and i'll tell the viewers do read the mind game and i can promise that it will bring some change at least in your approach to life even if it does not change your psyche even if it does not change your emotion at least you will know how to think about life in a different way am i right there we go thank you yes yes definitely so, I am yeah. I am not here to change your mindset or I am not here no, to no, say no, that you are no, thinking no. in the, not, the not right way. Yeah this is as I said it's a stimulus and you can respond to your own life and see how you can uh, lead a better emotional healthy life uh, in future and uh, I I thank uh, Mona Shengupta and Shushrut uh, for organizing this uh, session and readers and writers club and we'll have more sessions like that and lovely knowing you devika i'm sure we'll be in touch in future have a, a lovely uh, sunday and lovely life in in future and write more books as i suggested about on parents and 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 teachers yeah. also for us sure, thank, you very much. thank thank, thank you, you all so lovely yeah. well, we have got lots of messages which we could not uh, read out but i'm sure when you watch it after the live session is over uh, you, you will see that how it, people have reacted to our session and, and i'm sure you will uh, send links to your friends when this session is over yes sure lovely talking to you yeah same here thank you yeah. thank you so much thank you, thank you.